Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial on Beathawk. In this video I would like to go through the track settings which you can find here, in this part of the screen. And you access them clicking on the track. So let's ensure first of all that we click on a particular pad like this one. At the moment we have created a new project, so it's all empty. So let's start with the first tab which is the edit tab. So you can see here um, an empty space. Uh, if you click on that, you go and uh, into the browsing part where you can choose an instrument or a sample. You can click exit to come out from this screen. You can achieve the same click in here where it says browser. So let's click go under EDM and let's load a, an instrument. And let's uh, load, for example, a uh, synth lead. <coughs> Let's choose um, something like, um, I don't know, let's try some. That will be fine. Let's um, click on load. And it says it's loaded. And as you can see, it's loaded against the particular part which is showing here. Let's click exit. So we have uh, loaded a um, an instrument and inside this pad. If you click on the pad, it will play. Let's load a couple of other uh, sample stroke instruments which we will use to continue the um, exploration of the settings on the track. So let's click on another pad, let's go to the browser, and this time instead of an instrument, let's load a drum loops. And let's pick up the first one, click on it, click again to audition it. Okay, that's perfect, so we click load and then we click on exit. Okay, perfect. So. Let's continue the exploration of the settings. Here underneath the browser, you have a game. So let's click on the, and hold on the uh, drum loop and let's change the game. So that's the game for the particular part that you have associated. Next we have a pan. Of course, you can hear that uh, if you have headphones or near speaker near you, left to the right. Okay, next we can change the pitch by semitones, of course, up and down. Of course, that will affect the play rate. You can also use that on a normal instrument. Okay, perfect. Then we have additional settings here. We have high, high pass filter. And also low pass filter. We can change the effects for reverb and delay. So let's try. Yeah, I did the reverb and let's add delay. You can hear there is a delay. So I just did a little bit of low pass filter so the delay is more obvious. Additionally under here you have choke groups. So and you can choose for example which um, choke group this particular a sample instrument belongs to. And this is useful, for example, if you have drum instrument or samples because it reduces the polyphony to one. So that when you play one sample, if you play the next one, the previous one will definitely stop. Okay, next let's go through the ADSR for your attack, decay, sustain and release. So in this particular case, we have a lot of sustain, no attack, no decay, and a bit of release. Let's decrease the sustain. Let's give it a more attack. Start to become like a string because the attack, the time it takes to um, go to the peak volume is increasing. The, the time it takes to decay to the sustain is practically zero, but we can increase that. 
and then of course when we release the button the time it will take to go down to zero as a signal is determined by the release time or bar here which we can increase as well as you can see the time uh, is uh, elongated by the fact that I increased uh, um, uh, the size here on this bar okay next let's look at and uh, how we can record the sample and for this let's click on a part that is empty like that one let's click on record now what you see here is the volume from on the microphone on my iPad you can set the threshold here uh, by which you need to um, overcome in terms to uh, for the record to start for example useful if you have some noise you can set these above the noise and you will do that check in when you are not talking like so in this case there is a bit of noise below that we click record and um, when I finish recording we click again on record to stop it so let's try test okay we just give it a name here you can choose whatever you like for now I just accepted the default one and I click save okay and so I've created a, uh, a recording a new sample test 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 okay perfect now let's go to the sample um, section here it shows you um, the waveform and you have a couple of options so uh, first of all you can choose uh, to move these to start of the sample and also the clicking on here uh, at the end of the sample you also have option here to zoom at the start which is allow you to make a more granular more fine uh, selection of where the start point is and the same here at the end so you can choose exactly where to position the end of that click, let's click again on that to come out you can also stretch the sample you click on that and let's see what it sounds like test 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 opposite way test test you can see i'm stretching and making it longer test test okay very interesting okay next what i would like to show you is how some of the sample option change when you are using a loop so let's click on the loop here so as you can see the edit is the same here the adsr and the record stays the same but the sample have new features so you can see here all the transients you can see the simple uh sorry the symbol here for the looping okay and you can choose for example to play a different speed which will all be synchronized to your tempo of course so this time is times one we can double that or can divide that by two you can also enter uh, keyboard mapping mode where uh, uh, you have uh, the corresponding part of the sample map to your keyboard okay and you click on it again to come out from that mode so of course if you click on an instrument the sample will not be there because it is an internal instrument okay i hope you enjoyed so now you know how the track settings work see you next time bye